This module will focus on the Infinity Messaging Platform, which you will use all day, every day, as an expert. You are about to be exposed to a great deal of information, some of which may seem a bit technical, but don't be overwhelmed or discouraged. You aren't expected to finish this module with a mastery of Infinity. Rather, a basic understanding of the platform should be your goal. You'll be taken through the cycle of the call as it presents and plays out on the computer screen. Soon you will be sitting side by side with a fellow expert to be mentored, if you haven't done so already. And the knowledge you are about to gain will definitely come in handy at that time. We have a lot to do, so let's get started. There are four different ways a call can present to your screen, three of which will connect you with the caller. Those ways are ring state, auto state, zero state, and disconnect state. Before we break down these four ways, it is very important to understand that a ring counts for six seconds, and we strive to answer all of our calls within three rings, or 24 seconds. Keep in mind that the first six seconds are considered zero. When a call comes into our system and there is no front-end greeting introducing the caller to our customer and giving them possible options to assist with directing the call, it will present to you in ring state if the call is answered within 24 seconds. If we are not able to answer them within 24 seconds, the caller will hear an auto answer stating our customer's names and an assurance that we will be with them shortly. If this occurs, the call presents to you in auto state letting you know that the caller has waited longer than 24 seconds. When a call comes in and there is a front-end greeting introducing the caller to our customer and giving them possible options to assist with directing their call, it will present to you in zero state. When a customer has a front-end greeting, they will not have an auto answer. Therefore, the state will only continue to count the number of rings identifying them as zero. When a call presents to you with no live caller on the other line, it will present to you in disconnect state, identified by the abbreviation DISC. There will still be a ring count associated with it identifying how long the call has been active in disconnect state. When you receive a call in disconnect state, do not assume nothing needs to be done with the call. It is best practice to park the call to the expert that is dispatching to assure no steps are missed for our customer. Each customer's account holds all the information needed to provide the caller with a wow experience, including information on how and where the call needs to be dispatched. Although there is a visual difference between the basic infinity screen and the IS infinity screen, the information and where it is located will still be the same. Basic Infinity will be very uniform with only the variation of black and red font. It will allow you to view all of the necessary information but not allow for any true identification of urgent information. IS stands for Intelligent Series and features a softer font. IS allows you to color code information and highlight key areas that will assist you with creating a wow experience. The account number and name area is located on the upper left hand corner of the customer's account screen. This area informs you which account you are answering or dispatching for and is used for many different reasons. The main reason is to assist with any further information that may be needed with the account. For instance, if you need to inform another expert or management of a problem with an account, you would refer to the account number. Another reason to use the account number is when follow-up is needed for the account. If an action needs to take place at a later time of day, a queue can be set for that account. Knowledge of our customers' account numbers comes with time and attention to detail, and it is key to our customer service. If a customer calls in on our main line, the level of customer service is elevated when you can identify the customer's account number or refer to it during conversation. Therefore, paying close attention to customer account numbers is very high on the priority list for all experts. The answer phrase is specific for each customer's account and is located at the top right-hand corner of the customer's account screen. It informs you how to answer the call to best fit the customer's needs, as well to inform callers that they have reached the right place. If we are not aware of whom we are answering for, as well as how to correctly pronounce it, we are not putting forth a professional service to our customer. And since we are partnering with our customers, we do ourselves a disservice as well. There are times when our customer's company name is pronounced differently than the spelling suggests. When this is the case, you will see dashes throughout the company name to assist in sounding it out. This type of phonetic spelling is a huge help to experts. Because our screens are limited in space for information, we often use common acronyms within our answer phrases. Take some time to look through the standard abbreviations used within our customer accounts.
The status area is located in the upper right-hand corner of the customer's account screen directly below the answer phrase. The status of the customer is listed here, such as gone for the day, in a meeting, at lunch, or not available at this time. The information in the status area is what you will tell the callers if they ask for a specific person or whether the office is open at that time of their call. In some of our customers' cases, we may be answering their calls during office hours to help assist with overflow. If this is the case, the status may read, unavailable at this time, even if it is within office hours. Infinity has the ability to set a status to expire at a designated time. This can be either a day or an exact time during the day. When a status is set to expire, it will appear in blue versus standard black. It will also have a date and time listed immediately after it. The date and time that is listed is the time in which the status will expire. Until the time of the expiration, you will utilize the status within the conversation if needed. Specials are not used by every customer, nor will they be used at all times. A special is meant to inform you of a non-reoccurring event or change for the customer. While you are actively speaking with a caller, it is located in the top left hand of the customer's account screen. When you are in the disconnected state or in the act of dispatching a call, it is located in the upper left hand box. If there are multiple specials for the account, the specials will be listed with the newest special first. A special can inform you that a customer is in a meeting for a specific amount of time. It can also provide on-call information, including changes to the normal on-call schedule, state that there is a known problem to inform callers about, and a number of other possibilities. All specials are timestamped so that the expert and the expert that is dispatching are aware of the time frame for it. Once a special has expired, it should be delivered off so that it is not referenced at the wrong time. Specials will present to you in the top right-hand side of the screen when you answer the call. This will assist with identifying if there is any information you need to know when you are talking with the caller. If a special is more than a temporary notification or a temporary change for the customer and their account, customer service should be notified so that the account can be updated. When a special is created that meets this criteria, you should submit a customer idea flash for the customer service manager to update the account. The information pages, also called info pages, are located in the lower left-hand corner of the customer account screen. The info pages are meant to make it easier and more efficient to deliver a wow experience for our customer, as well as make it easier for you to assist the caller. Info page 1 has 12 different areas that will help you correctly communicate to callers, information about the customer as well as expectations for the call and their message. Area number 1, message type. This area informs you whether you are dealing with a standard message form, an IS script, or if it has special areas that you need to be aware of. Abbreviations are used due to the limited amount of space. Take some time to look through the standard abbreviations used within our customer accounts. Area number two, dispatch type. This area informs you if any additional actions are needed for the message that you take. Does it need to be parked to the expert that is dispatching or put into the customer's voicemail? Maybe it needs to be patched to the customer or perhaps no further action is needed after the call and the message is complete. This information will also assist you in setting the appropriate call closing action statement, something we will discuss later. It is imperative that you are aware of this area to assist in managing the dispatch volume. If there is no additional actions needed, the call can be completed or done by the expert, thus eliminating unnecessary messages to build up in the dispatch queue. Once again, abbreviations are used due to the limited amount of space. Take some time to look through the standard abbreviations used within our customer accounts. On-call types. This area informs the expert and the expert that is dispatching where the on-call information for the customer can be found. For the expert, this information is useful to personalize the call and inform the caller who will be receiving the message if it meets the dispatch. For the expert that is dispatching, it informs them where they will find the person to dispatch a message to and the contact numbers for that individual. The areas that the on-call type can be found in are directory, on-call schedule, special, info page, or none. On-call changes. This area informs the expert and the expert that is dispatching when any changes in the customer's on-call schedule occur. 
For both the expert and the expert that is dispatching, this will come in handy if no one is listed on the on-call schedule to identify a pattern of who may be on call. For the expert, this information is useful to personalize the call and inform the caller who will be receiving their message if it meets the dispatch criteria. For the expert that is dispatching, it informs them where they will find the person to dispatch the message to and the contact numbers for that individual. The identifiers for the on-call changes can be daily, weekly, monthly, fixed, or varied. Voicemail. This area states whether the customer has a voicemail account with us. If so, the caller has the option of leaving a voicemail if they so desire. If the dispatch instructions inform Apple Tree to record all messages into voicemail, this is where the expert or the expert that is dispatching will know there is a voicemail to record the message into. The identifier for voicemail will be Y for yes or N for no. Directory. This area informs you if the customer's account has a directory of their employees. This information can be accessed to obtain the correct spelling of an individual's name to create a wow experience. In addition, if the script instructs you to give out contact numbers for our customer, you will locate that information within the directory. The identifier for directory will be Y for yes and N for no. Subaccounts. This area informs if there are any sub-accounts or subs for the customer that the script may guide you to or the message may be better suited for. This is primarily found in basic Infinity accounts. One example of a customer using subs is one that provides delivery and servicing for oil and propane heating units. You need to be very diligent in correctly identifying the path of the script to assist the expert that is dispatching. The identifier for subs will be Y for yes and N for no. Note, sub accounts are not very common any longer with IS Infinity. Fax email. This area informs you if and when the customer will receive their messages taken in their account via fax or email and if their messages can be sent at an unscheduled time manually. This information will be useful for you if customers are unsure of when their messages are sent and also to verify if they can request to have their messages sent at an unscheduled time. The identifier for fax email will show the day and time a scheduled fax email is set for the account. Message ticket. This area informs you if there are different message tickets, abbreviated TIX, needed for different types of calls. An example of this is a medical customer who may have many different services that they offer their callers. You may need to use one type of ticks for the cardiac division of the customer's service, thus needing specific information for that area that is different from the thoracic area. Therefore, instead of the customer needing to sort through information that they may not need, different ticks are created instead. Daytime information varying. This area informs you if the instruction for the customer's account is different during the day versus in the evening. For example, you may need to send any messages to the customer's voicemail during the day but to an expert that is dispatching in the evening. The identifier for day is Y for yes or N for no. Patching. This area informs you whether the customer has patching capabilities set up for the account. When a call comes in, there may be times you need to patch the call to a customer. Thus, you are acting as a receptionist for the customer. The identifier for patch is Y for yes and N for no, and there is an entire module dedicated to patching later in the series. Notes. This area informs you if there is any specific information for the customer on a consistent basis. Some examples of notes are, if only particular individuals at the company can make changes to the account, if there is a time difference between us and our customer that you should know about, and if there are any specific instructions on how to handle calls. The notes area will only reflect information that is needed by you as you are speaking with the caller. Info page 2. This page contains company information you may need regarding operations of the customer. It states the company name, the address, hours of operation, and the main phone number. You may also find a fax number, an inside number for the customer, the forwarding number, the key person at the company that we work with, and the web email addresses that you can give to callers should they request it. Other than the inside number and anything else noted, all of the information on the company information page can be supplied to the caller. 
Any of the phone numbers that you can access through the F6 dial key will have a unique character at the beginning of the number, reflecting the ability to dial it from the info page. Within Basic Infinity, it is an icon that looks similar to a dollar sign. And within IS Infinity, it is an icon that looks like a yellow telephone. Note that with IS Infinity, oftentimes the inside number is not visible to you. Info page 3. This info page informs you of the services offered by the customer. It will be as specific as the customer wishes it to be. You will utilize this information if the caller is unsure if they called the correct company, or if the caller wishes to verify the company can help them with their needs. If at any time you feel more information in the services offered for the customer could assist with better call handling, submit a customer idea flash. Info page number four. This page contains dispatching information and informs the expert and the expert that is dispatching whether the message will be dispatched to the customer or not. This information will be very useful to the expert in creating the call closing action statement to adequately inform the caller what they can expect to happen after their call has ended. For the expert that is dispatching, this information is important to assist in correctly identifying whether the message will or will not be dispatched to the customer. Info page number four has five different areas that will assist the expert and the expert dispatching to maintain the confidence of the caller and our customer. Dispatch clear. This area will inform the expert that is dispatching whether the message needs to have confirmation of receipt in the way of actually speaking with the customer or not. All communicates that all messages dispatched require a verbal confirmation of receipt. Some communicate that some of the calls dispatched need to have a verbal confirmation of receipt. Specific information on which messages need the confirmation will be listed in the notes area of the dispatch clear page. None communicates that no messages dispatched need verbal confirmation of receipt. If the system takes care of the dispatching, this will be noted in the notes section of the dispatching instructions info page. Specific calls will be listed if there are only specific types of calls that need to be cleared when dispatching and receive verbal confirmation of receipt. One example of this is if second calls from callers require verbal confirmation. Day information. This area informs the expert and the expert dispatching if dispatch instructions differ between day and night. One example of this is customers who have requested us to dispatch their calls that meet certain criteria to the back private line during day hours and then to an on-call during night hours. The identifiers for day are Y for yes and N for no. And if yes is listed, an additional dispatching information page will follow with the day dispatched instructions on it. Area number three, dispatch or labeled DISP for. This area informs the expert and the expert that is dispatching what messages need to be dispatched. A descriptive list will be given so that both are knowledgeable of these criteria to assist with communication to the caller and our customer. Area number four, dispatch instructions. This area informs the expert that is dispatching what steps need to be taken to dispatch and clear each message that requires these actions. Before the expert that is dispatching can follow these instructions, they will refer to info page one, on call type, identified as OC type, to identify the area containing contact individuals and numbers to dispatch to. Many abbreviations are used in this area since there is a limited amount of space. Take some time to look through the standard abbreviations used within our customer accounts. Area number five, notes. This section clarifies any areas within info page number four that are needed during dispatching instructions. Info page number five. This area informs the expert and the expert that is dispatching of the customer's holiday hours, noting full and partial day closures. An expert will utilize this area to inform the caller if an office observes holiday hours for any specific holiday. An expert that is dispatching will utilize this area to assist with dispatching calls during holiday hours, which will be considered night hours, no matter what time during the day. At last, 
You have reached the end of this module and have been exposed to the Infinity Messaging Platform. Don't worry, this will become second nature to you when you begin to take calls. And you can always refer back to this module for clarification on any subject. Also, remember that your fellow experts and managers are available to answer questions for you. After all, take care of each other is one of our seven core values.